is my to-do list for today, starting this afternoon, because I had a lazy morning. Wash yourself, a shore walk, to gas station to see if there's gas, buy groceries, check water tap, get celebrate productive day, and also a pickup line that I wrote on the top that says, hey baby, are you a hazard to navigation? Because you're on fire! So let me know if you guys use that one and if it was successful, uh, because I really think that used correctly, this is a good pickup line. Welcome to Winterfee Sailing. I'm single-handing my Grind 27 around the world. I started my trip in Maine with a very cold 10-month overhaul of my entire boat. Solo sailed through the Caribbean, the Panama Canal, and 41 days alone across the Pacific. I've been cruising in French Polynesia for the last year and a half, kiting, spearfishing, freediving, and of course fixing all the things that bring on my boat. Aboard the Gek, I have no fridge, water maker, fancy electronics, and my rowboat is a dinghy with a sail rig. If you're interested in seeing my daily life, check out my Instagram, at BoatLizard. Okay, enjoy the episode. Day one, back in civilization. I just got in from the grocery store and guess who has vegetables? Two cucumbers drying in the sun because they were in the fridge in the grocery store and now they need to decondensate before... Oh my god, look at this view. Next order of business is to hop in the dinghy and it's kind of windy and wavy so it's going to be wet and just slightly difficult row but over there is the gas station and i need to change out one of my propane bottles for a fresh one and i just walked over there this morning because they don't always have the kind that i use and they have a bunch in stock so i'm gonna take that out next and row over to the gas station and change it out and it's a pretty good row it's probably 10 or 15 minutes each way with wind so I've been putting it off but also I just had lunch and I bought this new tea it's green tea with um, pineapple and pamplemousse and I wanted to test it out because I feel like it would make good gifts to bring back to people in the states so let's see how it is it's good <laughs> all right next task take this boy over and exchange them out for a new one. Sorry, buddy. Okay, I just changed this guy out. This is the gas station. Here's the little dock. And then you just walk over down there and change out the bottle and pay. So I'm just gonna take this guy home. My boat is way over there. <laughs> okay, new propane is in place. Next, I am getting out all my jerrys so that I can go ashore and fill these puppies up. So this is the place where the water tap is. It's also the place where people put their vase out of the water. So I'm just gonna go here and see what I can see. All right, fresh water tap is over there. I didn't film it because there's a lot of people that are getting water. And then I have all my jerrys full. So I'm just gonna put my dinghy in the surf and then put the jerrys in while it's floating. Otherwise I'll never get it in the water. I'll say this was a successful day, super busy. Super tired physically, it's been a lot of rowing and carrying things, but all my chores are done. I can go to bed happy, and tomorrow I'm going to move to the Outer Reef Anchorage where there's fresher breeze, clearer water, and more sunshine so I can do laundry. I just got up and look at this beautiful view. Minus the cruise ship. I had to tie my dinghy to the side of my boat last night because <laughs> if you look at all the boats, you can see the current is just really strange. And so my boat was banging against the hull all night. I'm at 11 feet of water. <laughs> it's kind of terrifying. Uh, I can stand under the, my boat with my feet on the bottom and put my hand on the keel. Look at this water color. It's so pretty. Today I'm going to what is called Stingray City with some of my friends. It's a place where you can see a bunch of stingrays and sharks. The tour groups do feed them to attract them for tourists, but it's still really beautiful to kind of come and see all of this abundance in one place. Head held high, even though it's not a lie that we meet deep in the dust. Killing time while pretending that we're fine, thinking someday. Take my advice. <laughs> 
Morea Foraitea. It's my last big passage before the haul out. I'm in 11 feet of water, uh, super shallow to port. I'm going to try to sail off my anchor once again because I don't want to start my engine. But this is one of the last big passages where I have to think about this, and I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, I'm off. Goodbye, Morea. Hello, 100 miles of open ocean. And Raitea is my last glimpse, possibly ever, of this beautiful island. Feels good to be at sea. Leaving is the hardest part. As soon as I get my sails up, I'm good. Oh, so when I was leaving, um, it always, so when you leave under sail, you kind of, there's usually a tack that's better than the other one, because once the anchor's off the bottom, your boat starts sailing. But single-handing, there's no one to steer, so you go wherever the boat decides to go. So usually there's one direction that's better, and I never manage to do the direction that I want to do. I always go in the wrong way. So I upped the anchor and I was heading towards the shallows. So I was trying to turn downwind and I had my sail all the way out. Cause you know, um, if you have your main in and you're trying to turn downwind, your boat won't let you. So you should let it all the way out and then pull it in right before you drive. And I wasn't turning, wasn't turning, heading right for the reef. I was like, come on boat, come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do this. Finally got in the turn that I wanted. Um, all was well, but it was, eh, it's always an adventure. <laughs> But it was fun. I'm gonna set my wind vane up. I'm just a uh, hand steering, ice hand steered to get out of the pass. I'm just gonna be on this tack for about 10 or 15 minutes to get away from land. Um, the waves pile up on the shelf break and it's kind of nasty right here. But then once I get away, I'm gonna turn off downwind, head for Itea. Hopefully I don't have to set the whisker pole, but I might have to, so I'll find out. 421. And the wind is dropping off a little bit. Uh, it's kind of up and down. This is one of the more annoying points of sail. It's just shy of needing to use the whisker pole. So usually my course is fine, but when the wind drops, the wind vane isn't able to maintain my course and then the jib does this thing. So I have to kind of try to fix the course with my foot. I hate it when the jib slaps. Um, but other than that, it's been really nice. It's uh, pretty wavy. So I'm just lying in the cockpit, chilling, making an amazingly good time. Uh, I've been averaging about five and a half, 
to six knots, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Things are getting chilly out here in cockpit land. Uh, it's really nice to have no more sun and going west means that after about three or four, the sun is behind my sails and the cockpit is a nice shady haven, which is also super nice. It's really nice knowing that when I leave somewhere, I'm not coming back. It feels like I'm back on my journey. I know I've talked about this before, but it's a totally different feeling to be sailing with a directional purpose again. Leaving a place and knowing that I'm potentially never ever going to go back really makes me feel like all I have in this world is myself and my boat and that is such an awesome feeling. It feels so freeing to be out here with the unknown in front of me and the known behind me and it feels like so much more of an adventure. You know the past two years I've been sailing around French Polynesia and going east against the trades, going west with the trades, going back east, trying to figure out which places I want to see again, which new ones I want to see for the first time, but it's all kind of felt like doing circles in the same place. And now I'm still in French Polynesia, but I'm heading west slowly. And each mile that I make is one that I don't have to recross again. And it's the same old feelings of adventure that I've been chasing my whole life. They're finally coming back to me and it feels really good. It's been a long time since I have had these feelings at sea where I just am so excited for what is in front of me and what's behind me is sweet and it makes what lies ahead even sweeter because I know what can happen. It's really nice. I think I'll probably spend my whole life chasing this feeling. I don't know. It's really amazing. Being out here all by myself, sort of getting gently, sometimes violently, <laughs> rocked by my boat by these waves and getting pushed with the wind, the golden sun on my sails. and <sighs> It's just the life that I was meant to live. I really know deep down in my heart that I am doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm approaching Raiatea now. It's been a really long night. It squalled and rained all night long. I had a hand steer in the rain. I got super cold <laughs> and it wasn't fun. But now it's sunny and beautiful. Basically, as soon as the sun set, I got into a giant squall that didn't end until the sun rose. So it was a long night. I'm really excited to sleep when I get in. But I'm coming up on the pass. Uh, and then once I'm in the pass, I think it's just another three or four miles four miles, I think, three and a half, to get to the bay where I'm gonna anchor. So the end is near. I think I should get in around four. Um, Just made it in to Raiatea as the sun is setting. Super tranquilo here. I'm so very tired. Probably just gonna eat a light snack and then go to bed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just got home from one of the most insane days that I've had in a long time. So I hitchhiked in to the Carinage where I'm hauling my boat out tomorrow and met the owner of the boat here, Dominique. So nice. Already love him. Uh, we've set an appointment for me to haul my boat tomorrow at 9.30. It's about eight miles to get there. And as we know, I am very slow boat, so I'm probably going to leave at six in the morning or earlier just to make sure that I make it there. Often there's light wind in the morning and I might have to motor, but the good thing is is that the end of the trip involves getting into a travel lift, so even if my boat starts to sink from my engine leak, at least I know. <laughs> if 
I can make it to the travel lift now. It'll be okay. It's the last run of the stuffing box. Uh, also ran into some friends of mine, helped them get their boat ready for a trip they're taking to the Two Motors. I'm so sweaty. I smell like... Oh, I look like a zoo. I smell like a zoo. And also, <laughs> look what happened to my pet. Ah! So I borrowed a safety pin to try to keep them from ripping anymore. Uh, because it's getting kind of scandalous, but yep, this is how I hitchhiked home. I had a bag of uh, pomplamoose and bananas that I was kind of holding in front of my pants rip, like, hello, <laughs> put me in your car, please, and then I tried to keep my arms down, <laughs> but <sighs> yes, okay, yeah, tomorrow, the geck is coming out of the water, oh, crazy. Thank you guys for watching this week's video. Uh, I put out new videos every two weeks on Mondays and for my patrons, you guys get a snack on the weeks that I don't put out full length YouTube. On my Patreon, I am reading through some of my old journals from when I had previous sailing adventures and also taking questions that you guys have about anything that you want me to address about my life, my gear, things that I'm doing, and answering those on Patreon, as well as having some lovely conversations with you guys. So my Patreon is patreon.com slash wintippy if you'd like to join for as little as a dollar a month. Um, and if you would like to support me on PayPal, my PayPal is paypal.me slash wintippy for one-time donations. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing and you are making all of this possible. Thank you for your comments. I love reading them and getting back to them whenever I have internet. Thank you, Tish, my manager for, oh, she's not my manager, she's my sister, but she helps me schedule these videos and get them posted on time. This, so, okay, this is a pre this week's edit. Today is Saturday, um, oh my God. And one of the reasons that I'm at sea, as you can tell, uh, I've been beating into about 20 knots of wind for the past 30 hours, desperately trying to make it into Morea so that on Sunday I can edit a video for you guys and put it on Dropbox where Tish can grab it and throw it up on YouTube for you. Parentheses. And just to clarify, I have not edited this video yet, which is why I need to get in because I cannot edit at sea. Um, I think I would probably puke. <laughs> and parentheses. So uh, the pressure's on. I'm hoping to get in tomorrow morning, but I'm not sure. There's pretty strong current and uh, my tack angles are not great. But things have been looking up this afternoon. So this is not the where this week's edit is coming from, but it's the pre this week's edit, <laughs> the day before hopefully, and yeah, it's a little bit of a wild ride out here. No moon, uh, but beautiful constellations at night, and just uh, really good to have a boat that doesn't leak anymore. This is jumping ahead, but I am post boat yard, post haul out, and no leak problems at all, so hooray! Okay, I will see you guys in two weeks, YouTubers and my patrons, I'll see you next week with a snack.